So in stark contrast to the Nike Flight Ball with its very unusual design, we now have the Match Ball for the 2020-2021 Bundesliga season, the Derby Star by Select, which as you can see, is much more traditional in its overall design with a 32 panel construction and does feature some minor changes in comparison to previous seasons. But the question is, is a ball like this that's very traditional better or worse than a lot of these high tech balls that we see from pretty much every other brand? It's also different colors on both sides. And I've discussed this topic on the channel before, but I want to talk about it again. When you think about the sport of football, really the only thing that's required to play that sport is the ball itself. So you would think that would be the one piece of equipment that would be standardized across the board. But if you look at all the different leagues and tournaments at the professional level, the match balls vary tremendously in terms of design, in terms of feel, in terms of certain performance characteristics in some cases. So the question is, is this a good football? Is this an old school design that's just obsolete by today's standards? I want to talk about all of that in this video, as well as go over the technical details of what is new about this next season's Bundesliga match ball, because I really do feel like this is one of the elite match balls on the market. If you want to learn more about it, please stick around and watch the entire review. And if you are interested in one of these balls for yourself, I'll leave a little pop-up on screen, or you can click the first link down below. That's going to take you to the review page on my website, where you'll find Buy It Now links with it exclusive SR4U coupon codes, you'll be able to pick this ball up below its normal $160 retail price. And that's another question, why are match balls so expensive, especially when you have a design as traditional as this one has? And that's not necessarily just the fault of the brands, but also the leagues as well as FIFA, because all of these deals are signed with the leagues and all of these match balls have to be FIFA approved. There is a fee associated to that FIFA approval. So you could point the finger in a couple different directions but there's quite a few reasons as to why these are way more expensive than they should be but that's a whole nother topic for a whole nother video is another a word also if you guys do end up enjoying this video and would like to see more reviews on balls and equipment don't forget to support this one with a like and if you are new here watching for the first time and don't want to miss out on weekly content on everything football make sure you hit that subscribe button. So first things first, let me just explain who actually makes this ball. Cause you can see it is Derby Star branded. They're the ones who technically own the rights to be the official match ball supplier of the Bundesliga outbidding Adidas several years ago, but they don't actually make this particular ball. The Derby Star kind of specializes in lower end, cheaper footballs, if you will, but they use this as an advertising platform. And instead of spending the money to develop their own match ball, they basically just have Select to do it for them. So you can see it says Buy Select, which is a brand that I'm sure you're very familiar with. And it's the Brilliant APS specifically. That is the variant from the Select lineup that this ball actually is. And then they just put the Derby Star branding just to give them the advertising. Cause that's ultimately what the match ball is all about. And as a Select match ball, which is what this is, it's very high quality as you would expect. I've said several times throughout my history on YouTube that I think Select makes the very best football, the very best match ball that money can buy. Historically, their match balls have been less expensive than Nike, Adidas, and Puma in some cases as well, but that's not the case anymore. This is now $160. You have to pass up on pretty much any other option to buy this. And when you compare it to everything else, it comes across as maybe a little bit too old school, a little bit boring, I think is how some people would describe this ball. But at the same time, I don't think that's a bad thing. So here's the technical breakdown. The ball features a very traditional 32 panel construction. Aside from the crazy graphics, this would look like a very plain Jane football, which again, some people might view as a bad thing. Now, all of those 32 panels, as you can pretty clearly see, are actually hand stitched together, which makes this pretty much the last holdout as far as official match balls for major leagues go that do not feature fuse welded panels. This is all stitched together and it does appear like there's some excess glue along the edges, but I think that's just there from the construction process, not actually as a means of connecting the panels together. Now the panels themselves are made from what I would describe as a relatively thin, relatively firm polyurethane material. And something I don't love about this particular design is that the panels that are colored have a matte finish and then the panels that are white have a glossy finish. So there's a little bit of inconsistency because I feel like the glossy finish ones are a little bit grippier to the touch, although it's a lot less noticeable on the ball. Either way, all of those panels feature a brand new texturing, which is kind of the major, 
I guess, change in comparison to the last two seasons of Bundesliga match balls, where instead of having a golf ball like Dimpling, it has these mini triangles. So it ends up being kind of like a grid pattern. And then within each of the little kind of squares, you have four individual triangles. I'm not sure if you guys can make that out on camera, but it's very noticeable in person. Although I will say it's a very subtle texturing to the touch. It's visually more impactful than it is in terms of actual feel. And when you have boots on your feet, it's honestly something that I wouldn't say is noticeable whatsoever. Now, the reasoning for this added texturing is to not allow water to sit directly on the surface, which just allows for better grip in wet weather playing conditions, but also for aerodynamic reasons, at least according to select on their own website. So similar to the Nike Flight Ball, which has this very significant texturing for the sake of truer flight, this sticks with a very standard 32 panel construction where obviously the seams in between the 32 panels are very noticeable, but to go along with that, to break up the smooth surface of the ball, they implemented these very little triangles in the form of a micro texturing on the surface. And the end result, is ultimately not a ball that I think feels that different from previous select match balls that I've used, but as a whole, it performs like I think a football should, which is exactly what I've always liked about select match balls. As far as performance characteristics are concerned, the ball does feel a little bit firmer to the touch, especially in comparison to some of the more popular match balls, so that is a distinct difference. I'll also say that the ball feels kind of somewhere in the middle, I guess medium in terms of overall weight. It's not super light. It's not super heavy. It's really the firmness that I think is distinctively different. And in terms of how it flies through the air, because that's really, I guess, the point of contention in terms of what differs from one match ball to the next. That seems to be the focal point of all of these new technologies. It feels and flies through the air very normal, meaning that if you kick it straight, it goes straight. Like, I don't know what else to say. I think that the problem with a lot of these very fancy designs that you have on match balls is they're exciting from the perspective that when you kick it for the first time, you don't really know how it's going to feel or how it's necessarily going to react. And in some cases, like the Adidas Jabalani as an example, you do end up with a football that kind of has a mind of its own. You have to adjust yourself to the ball. And I think for the most part across the board, while all of these different match balls do have a different feel to them and very minor performance quirks, they're relatively consistent. But I still feel, and I'm still gonna make the argument that the most consistent type of football you can have is one that's more traditional with a standard 32 panel construction like this one has. And it's funny, because it seems like every time I do a review of a ball, especially a high-end match ball that's very expensive, you get comments saying, I would never pay $160 for a ball. And that's totally fair, I agree with that statement to a certain extent. Like I said earlier, I think they're too expensive, but you also get those people that say, what's the point of paying that much when a football is a football? There's really no difference between them. And that, I guess from the perspective of the best player is always going to be the best player regardless of what ball you're using, I guess that's true. But to say that there's no difference in terms of feel and performance characteristics from one ball to the next, is totally ignorant, I don't care what anybody says. Something that I hated growing up was playing in leagues that never had a standardized match ball. So every single match that was an away game, you'd be at the mercy of the away team's match ball, which most cases, it was different from the one that you were used to. And in some cases, they would have two different balls. So the one that you'd start with and then the backup ball on the sideline, should the first one go away too far? When those were different, that drove me absolutely insane. And even if you look at the professional level, when players are in training up to a league match, they train with the league match ball. And then when they play in the Champions League the next week, in all of the training sessions leading up to that match, they train with the match ball that's going to be used in the Champions League. Yes, you can make an argument that it's only minor differences from one ball to the next, but at the elite level, and if you're trying to be as consistent as possible, which is kind of what this sport is all about, it's the reason why you train in the first place, having some level of consistency with the ball, I think is very important. So while I don't think this will ever happen, because it seems to me like the FIFA approved system and all of these brands working with the leagues and FIFA are more interested in marketing and making money, and the best way to do that is to create these kind of space age looking products like the Nike Flight Ball, I really do feel like the 32 panel construction, everybody likes it, it performs the part, it doesn't do anything crazy, it's very, very consistent, you end up with a product that is also very durable when you build a ball this way. 
I feel like just like other sports have, there should be some standardizations with the football. Because right now it really seems like as long as the ball is a spherical shape of some sort, it'll get a FIFA approved rating. So in conclusion, can I recommend the Derby Star Bundesliga match ball? And I think the answer to that question is a resounding yes, but I kind of knew that going into this. If you're after something with a more traditional construction where you kind of know what to expect from a feel and performance standpoint, which you can't always say about a lot of these modern match balls, then and this is by far the best option and the quality of the select brand speaks for itself. It's extremely well made and definitely built to last. With that said, it's very expensive at $160. I would say if you have a previous season Derby Star with the golf ball texturing, I don't think that this new triangular texturing is reason to go out and buy this. And really my main issue with the price on this particular match ball, given how traditional it is, is that Select makes a lot of footballs at varying price points, some significantly cheaper than this, that ultimately provide a very similar experience in my opinion. So unless you just want the best of the best, the exact match ball they're using in the Bundesliga, a lot of the mid-range price or the mid 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 price range select balls which you can get for like 50 60 70 dollars they're going to give you 99 percent of the experience that this football has on offer it's just a matter of whether or not you need to have the best of the best if not I wouldn't necessarily say that this should be at the top of your list. Anyways, guys, that's it for my review. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to support it with a like. Again, if you're interested in one of these balls for yourself, you can click the first link down below. That's going to take you to the review page on my website, where you'll find buy it now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes. Where you'll be able to pick this ball up below its normal $160 retail price. I'll also link some cheaper options that I do recommend from the select brand as well. So check that out if you're looking for a cheaper alternative. If you have any questions, as always, leave them down below in the comment section and I'll do my best to get an answer out to you. If you're not subscribed to the channel already, make sure you hit that subscribe button for weekly videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. If you're not following me on social media, all of that's linked down below as well. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.